My name's Skyler. I was in the Army, active duty, six years. I think the overall experience of being in a combat zone um, stays with you forever. I think my vehicle got blown up directly, maybe four times, and indirectly, you know, a handful of times. So I think there's like an anxiety that sticks with you about stuff like that. Getting out of the military, it's, it's scary, you know, because you have this whole life that you learned. Um, for me, it was six years active duty uh, in an infantry unit. Now I have to all of a sudden go be a civilian. I didn't have any Army buddies around. So I didn't have people that I could talk to and hang out with. And I kind of felt alienated um, from the civilian world because I didn't share anything in common. When I got out, I didn't think that I had PTSD, you know? I almost thought like PTSD was something that people who couldn't handle the intensity of their job had. Um, and when I got out, I didn't think that I had any issues or, or, or mental health issues that would affect me in the civilian life. I found that I was having trouble controlling my emotions sometimes, my anger, um, my frustrations. It was easier for me to get frustrated. And when I did get frustrated, I took it more seriously, as if something serious was going on. If I was running late to a movie, I felt like I was running late to a mission and people's lives were at stake. Uh, but that wasn't the reality. That, that personality characteristic, that intensity, that drive, makes you succeed in the military, but it doesn't in the civilian world. It alienates you. And I had to, had to back off and, and let that go. And that was hard. Um, it was, it took, it took a lot of other people coming up to me and telling me, hey, I think you have PTSD, or hey, I think that you have things going on that you need to talk about or you need help with. I said, no, I don't think I have PTSD. What could I have PTSD from? And I was always thinking there has to be some specific event. I don't have a constant nightmare where I wake up and I'm reliving a specific situation. I'm not constantly bunkered down in my house behind sandbags, you know, waiting for the invading army to attack. No, I don't have any of those things going on. But there is something kind of wrong, you know? I do have this, this agitation, this anxiety, this hypervigilance from time to time. Maybe, maybe something's not right. So I went down to the VA and they asked me, they said, have you ever been blown up before? Or have you ever been ex uh, exposed to a blast? And I said, yeah, uh, yeah, quite a few times. And they were like, how many? And I told them, and they were like, wow, well, uh, you probably have traumatic brain injury. They helped with uh, my memory and concentration issues and how to regulate my mood and stuff like that. And that was a really productive experience because at one point I felt hopeless. I felt like I'm on the road to not recovering. I'm on the road, I'm on a downward spiral into some abyss of like, you know, uh, mental disability. But working with uh, speech pathology and TBI clinic at the VA just, I mean, they had me turned around quick. In a few months, I was in school. I go to the Boulder Vet Center, but there's one, seems to be one located within proximity of every uh, VA hospital. My therapist was an uh, infantry soldier. He was deployed to Vietnam twice. Um, and speaking with him, working with him, it made me feel comfortable to talk about my stories because I knew they were familiar to him. He knew, with some, he knew the same emotions that I knew. He had the same feelings I had. Vet centers are great because they have this group dynamics aspect where you meet all these other combat vets. And I think that requirement alone creates a little bit of brotherhood that makes me feel comfortable walking into a group because I say these guys know what I'm talking about. They know what I know. They've seen what I've seen. If I'm going to open up or feel uncomfortable or be in an awkward situation, it's not going to be awkward because they have those same feelings. And any advice they have for me is uh, going to be beneficial. And, you know, I can take it to heart because it's coming from somebody with the same experiences. You're a civilian now. And the best way to I think come to peace with all of that stuff, uh, the best way to come to terms with all of your experiences is to talk about it, is to find other vets in the community, is to go to a local vet center down to the VA and talk about those experiences. The first thing I would say to anybody is it's not abnormal. You know, all, all the issues you're dealing with, you're not alone. You are not the only one, you're not weak. And the second thing I would say is go down to the VA. There's no better place to get help for a veteran than a place that is employed by veterans, run by veterans, and is designed to work around veterans. I wanna be a 
behavioral and cognitive therapist that works with combat veterans. So I'd go from I'd go from Skylar, the high school dropout, to <laughs> you know staff sergeant to uh, you know Skylar, the rugby player, to doctor. You know, and uh, those that's a path that I couldn't have even started without the VA. You know, um, they set you up for the road to success there.